let me begin with uh, the statement of the theorems first. Super rigidity says the following let G be a connected simply connected linear algebraic group over C. <coughs> Maybe G underline and G G R not is connected component to the identity the R points of G. Assume that G has no compact factors. Let gamma and G be an irreducible. gamma to j l n k is any representation of gamma or a local field k with rho gamma closure non-compact. This closure of course is in the house doctor topology non-compact then there exists a subgroup gamma prime of finite index. gamma such that rho is equal to gamma prime extends to an algebraic representation when I say it is an algebraic representation this means automatically that K is R or C okay. and then rho is becomes a restriction of a linear representation to the group continuous representation continuous is same as algebraic for some simple groups. So, ah forgot one other condition linear representation of gamma of local field K rho gamma per non compact and Zariski closure of uh, rho gamma simple meaning it has no I mean uh, I shouldn't say or rather I should really say connected identity connected component of this closure of gamma simple. Non-compact and 
identity component of Zersky closure of uh, rho gamma is simple. When I say Zersky closure, I mean of course over C okay. and that is to be simple as assumption. RG naught should not be uh, locally isomorphic to SL2. That is required? No, oh yeah, I, for, I forgot to see. Rank, what you have to make, is, yeah. Uh, assume G has no compactor and has rank greater than or equal to 2. It can have, it can be product SL2 cross SL2. Gamma needs to be irreducible, that is the only thing to take care of. This is a statement. Okay. And as a corollary, one finds an irreducible lattice in a semi simple group. Sim simple group G, the real sim simple group G of R rank greater than two is arithmetic. Okay. I first deduce the corollary from the theorem. Yeah. Then uh, the Zariski closure will be automatically simple. Uh, no. A posteriori, that will be true. No. Huh? No, no. See, Zariski closure. See, you are taking some representation. A priori, you do not know. Okay. One, once the representation, see, you. The point is that uh, it's you can also there is no loss of generalization. Assume rho gamma closure is uh, semi simple. Mm -hmm. Almost, but not quite, mm -hmm. because the problem is it, the in one factor it can be okay. compact thing can occur. Okay. So, so suppose it okay. the third group was G one cross G two, mm -hmm. and second one G two is compact. compact. Then you won't get this thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the proof of this corollary. First thing to note is you look at. Uh, <coughs> okay. I want to look at the adjoint representation on the Lie algebra GL of G. Gamma is sitting inside G. <coughs> and this is, uh, well, uh, let me, you see, I will I will consider the case when G, G is simple, because the general case you project each factor and do the thing. Okay, so assume G is simple, so that the adjoint representation will be reducible for the carpenter or R everything. Gamma in G <coughs> is closed and non-compact because G is itself non-compact. Okay. Now, let us look at R gamma G. This is set of all representations of gamma In G. This is this includes itself, I will call it I. And look at add composed with rho as consider for rho in R gamma G. R gamma G has a natural topology, 
ಗಾ ಐ ಮಸ್ಟ್ ಸೇ ಎನಿ ಲಾಟಸ್ ಇರಡ್ಯೂಸಬಲ್ ಲಾಟಸ್ ಗ್ರೂಪ್ ಆಫ್ ರ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಕ್ರೀಡ್ ಟು ಟೂ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ನೆಸೆಸರಿ ಇರಡ್ಯೂಸ್ ಇರಡ್ಯೂಸ್ ದಟ್ಸ್ ವೈ ಐ ಮೀನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಸೊ ಇಟ್ ಬಿಕಮ್ಸ್ ಅ ಸಬ್ಸೆಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಜಿ ಕ್ರಾಸ್ ಜಿ ಫೈನ್ ಆಟ್ ಪ್ರಾಡಕ್ಟ್ ಅದರ್ವೈಸ್ ಯು ವೋಂಟ್ ಸೇ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಸೇ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಅ ವೆರೈಟಿ ಆರ್ ಗಾಮಾ ಜಿ ಇಫ್ ಗಾಮಾ ಇಸ್ ಇನ್ ದರ್ಸ್ ನೋ ಫೈನ್ ಆಟ್ ಸೆಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಜನರೇಟರ್ಸ್ ಯು ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಕ್ವೈಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾಂಡಲ್ ದಿಸ್ ಬಟ್ ಸೊ ಗಾಮಾ ಇಸ್ ಫೈನ್ ಆಟ್ ಜನರೇಟೆಡ್ this is due to kashda if g has uh, <coughs> one factor of rank greater than 2 okay and uh, it follows from result of mine and garden if g has a rank one factor so if if, if this is not the case then all factors are rank one but rank must be greater than to 2 that conditions need g has rank 2 and gamma is reduced if the question is compact there's nothing to, so it's obvious yeah. if and so only when the question is non compact the question is non compact in this case one can construct a good fundamental domain from which you can deduce the gamma spin rate it is same the kind of fundamental domain you construct for uh, arbitrary arithmetic group same kind k a t z and mari pana adhe mari pana adu vacha finite generator undru but here uh, this uh, he has this theorem uh, about um, representations the trivial representation the isolated the space that adrian the deduces this that is cartesian okay property t hmm? property, property t. t when there is one rank one factor you can get told of property so look at add composite through as rho varies over r gamma g if rho is near i then automatically rho gamma as non compact closure see the point is that gamma will have some element whose eigen value is uh, modulus greater than 1 as an eigen value is modulus greater than 1 mm. so nearby yeah. uh, near that mm. so all nearby ones extend therefore so nearby by the okay. by the theorem yeah, yeah, yeah. all nearby ones so add composite through mm. extends to a representation of g and that has be close to add if you look at the lie algebra representations that's rigid any nearby representation of the lie algebra is going to be the same so it's a conjugation so if so it shows that if rho is sufficiently near i add composite rho equals add g at composite i at g inverse for some g in g so all there by one sir there and no g has a struct g you can think of as an algebraic group defined over some number field okay and the and near any point there is going to be some element in the point in the number field because of hilbert nusser and sachs okay by nusser and sachs there exists rho in r gamma g k for some number field k and but that rho which is conjugate to i is 
so with sorry with add compose to throw conjugate to add compose to thai. So, in fact, the situation is like this you have r gamma g, then you are mapping it to r gamma at g. And here you start the point, you are looking at a point rho here, and if you look at image here at composed with rho, this is an algebraic point. And this the mapping G to at G is a morphism defined over if some number field. Okay. G is simply correct, no? same number field on which G is defined, the universal covering is also defined. So the point rho is actually some k rational point, the inverse major k rational point, maybe some of the k prime point. Anyway, it has entries in the number field. So that is the first step that any gamma we are now shown is, has entries in the number field. Mm -hmm. If it is arithmetic that has to be true, right? Yes, yes, you, you can conjugate it into something with entries in the number field. And next statement I want to make is the following, which I also I made last time, that is so suppose Yeah, this is a proposition. If phi in G is a Zariski dense subgroup in the algebraic group G underline defined over. Some, some field k in C. I am not assuming it is a number field. At this point, I do not need to, at this for, for this statement, I do not need this any k in C. <coughs> any k generator? No, even that is not needed. Okay. Phi is in G, is a Zersky dense subgroup for an algebraic group G defined over k such that. P uh, G in so G algebraic subgroup of J L N defined over K right. such that phi is actually contained in G K K rational points. Let, 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 let L be the subfield of K generated by trace phi. I am sitting sitting inside JL trace gamma gamma in phi. Look at this field generated by traces. Then G has a definition over L and phi is contained in G. This is easy statement. Now you take the trace function on the group, which is the regular function, and take all its translates and take the algebra generated. That will be an algebra over L. It is a coordinate that gives you the, the, the coordinate ring gets defined over L. Okay. And the linear representation is after all contained in, in the regular, you know, 
the given representation contains the regular representation and it should be and it will be contained in the span of uh, these trace functions a standard uh, okay. okay so i won't say more than that so this is uh, okay so this prop this proposition now tells you that uh, you know, g you, the field over which g is defined can be even smaller than k we know it we know it's g gets defined over number field because of that mm. but it can be even smaller than k because you can take traces yes. so, okay so and obviously that's the most economical thing possible you can't you can't make the field okay. smaller than that okay so corollary uh, gamma g as in corollary then g has a definition over k a number field or say k the number field generated by trace x I should say G here I have taken G I am assuming some G L N. So you want some faithful representation. <coughs> okay, so this tells you first, the first step is that it is all contained in number field. Now the next you do the following. You have this number field k and let us denote by the set let us be the set of Archimedean valuations of k each v in s gives an embedding of k in the completion k v which could be r r c okay. now take such take in sigma say take a v in s now v gives you let us look at the mapping ga, gamma going to sorry look at the mapping gamma going to gamma v that is the embedding the embedding so maybe i should write i v gamma i v is the embedding of k in k v for each v you have this representation Oh, I'm sorry. I should really write here. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I V gamma in G L N K V. <coughs> G itself is sitting in G L N as a K sub group. Yeah. Oh, look at this map. Oh, so actually, it's goes into G of K V contained in J L N K. This is a representation. Gamma going to I V gamma is the representation of gamma. Okay. So either I V of gamma is compact or I V gamma <coughs> I V extends to a continuous homomorphism 
of G naught or equivalently uh, rational homomorphism of uh, G in G L K V. I am applying the Galois automorphism. Galois automorphism in general is not continuous yeah. for the uh, complete to complete yeah. topology, it is only for the number of fields. But in this case, it says the Galois automorphism actually extends. If image is not compact. Is not. So, what you find is uh, this. Right, right. No, the closer of the image is not compact. Either this is, so IV gamma is relatively compact. So, either it is IV gamma is relatively compact or this happens. Okay, now. <coughs> You find from this that this implies, yeah, implies either GKV is compact or IV gamma equals F gamma, where F is homomorphism from G to G itself is R points, G to is a morphism. But now, if you look at sigma gamma, <coughs> so sorry, yeah, I looked at gamma and IV gamma. Uh, yeah. So what happens is gamma. We have look at the natural mapping gamma to pi GKV V in S. What we are saying here is that some of the GKV can be compact and then rest gamma goes into pi GKV <coughs> and actually it is we know that uh, am I going to say this correctly. Uh, G goes into this product, okay. Phi F V with the pro F uh, maybe I put a V here. F V where uh, V of I V gamma I V gamma non compact, not relatively compact. And we also know that gamma is contained in GK. I want to claim that the GK essentially goes into integral points in GKV. If when you take, uh, sorry, when I take the V, uh, sorry, V, no, no, sorry, embedding of K and KV, not RRC, any, any local field. I take okay. take any local field. We we set up all not all valuations. V in S gives an embedding. Now, the in the case of periodic fields, there is no continuous homomorphism possible from a connected group. 
continuum, which means the image has to be compact. Okay. So that means that image gamma in so we in, I am taking the product of all the variations, and of course I can put a prime here, this restricted product. It goes into it, but actually gamma goes into a compact group for every V non Archimedean. Basically, therefore, you can ask by passing to a subgroup of finite index, you can, I mean, here itself, already I should have passed to a subgroup of finite index when I say pass to a subgroup of finite index suitably, then what happens? Gamma goes into G of OV for every V non, non Archimedean. So, gamma is going to be precisely the integral points, which means it is arithmetic. I mean, it is contained in the integral points, therefore, gamma is arithmetic. This is the proof of arithmetic once you have super rigidity. You have captured all the integral points, so to speak. Okay, now. So, let me get to the super rigidity. How does one prove super rigidity? One has first the following statement. If G no, this yeah, let me write theorem. Let G be a connected <coughs> G as above without original assumption, okay. And gamma G as above. Then given any representation and this, so G and what I am here I, sorry I suppose I should be more careful because uh, rank 2 conditions not needed for this theorem let me put it like this. The G be the connected identity connected component. of the real points of an algebraic group over R and gamma and G such that G has no compact factors and gamma and G an irreducible lattice. Then, given any representation rho of uh, gamma in G L and K, K local field there is a integer L 0 less than L less than N. and a measurable Borel measurable map f from G to 
uh, g mod p to Grassmannian of uh, L planes n where p is uh, a minimal parabolic and minimal parabolic in G and f of gamma G equals rho gamma f G for every gamma you got a gamma equivalent map from G mod P to some Grassmannian. This is theorem 1, theorem 2. If G above. as R rank greater than or equal to 2, then F is rational. This will essentially prove our super agility, the two together. Because the first one says there is a measurable map and the second one says when the rank is greater than 2, this mapping is actually. So, what has happened is this. <coughs> so, mapping is rational from G mod P to GNL, such that any rational map is necessary and it is compared with uh, gamma. From that, it is easy to see that it has to be a, it has to be induced by a map of G into the automorphism of the Grassmannian. Okay. okay, this is down your street, so to speak. <laughs> okay, it's uh, yeah. not a, not a difficult thing to check. I, I, I will not go into it. Okay, so once, so that means uh, this mapping, this rational essentially says that there's a mapping into the automorphism of the grass model, which is GLN, okay. or rather PGLN. So get it up in the PGLN, but when G is simply connected, you can lift it to GLN. As well, that's so that these two things are the things to prove. To now, for the first theorem, theorem one, the Furstenberg gave a proof of the theorem, but I still don't get the hang of the proof. I'll tell you something about the proof, but. I won't go into the details because I have not really got the got a got the grip got a grip on it. But I also have a, another way of looking at it, which my the other way of looking at it, I I don't have I have not uh, pinned down the proof completely. But I'll tell you bo both things. Okay, Furstenberg says the following. Firstly, he says there is you look at the projective space P, this is a mapping into GLN K. Look at the projective space P n minus 1 K and let P be the space of all. Probability measures on P. On the projective space. So, the first thing he says is on this space also GLN operates. So, get have, have action on P 
Now look at the following situation. You look at the space G <coughs> cross P with diagonal action. This is a fiber space over G mod gamma with P as uh, P is a compact space incidentally. Space set of all probability measures is a weakly compact thing in the dual two functions, etc. So you have I mean I'm essentially forming the associated fiber space to G G mod gamma I form form the associated fiber space. So I got this P S Now, the fiber is P or if you can think of it as uh, the, P, the, the fiber is can be thought of as probability measures on the on the on the fiber on the fiber of this map. You can also think of probability measures on this. Now, the group P acts on this space. On the left on G or G mod P left or right does matter something. I mean I, I put gamma action on the left so I should put G by P on the other side. Okay. But if I have written it this way, but anyway, so you <coughs> P action and P is an amenable group. Which one is an amenable group? P. P. It is an amenable group because P modulus unipotent radical uh, yeah, is yeah, abelian yeah. times compact. Yeah, okay, okay. It is an amenable group, okay. Mm -hmm. And an amenable group acting on a compact convex set mm -hmm. has a fixed point. Yeah. That is the Markov Cockathon yeah, theorem yeah. or whatever. But now you can apply that. In the fiber space situation, okay. it acts as an amenable group fiber wise, it will fix a point. Mm. Okay. So, P acts on the space, on this space, and has a fixed point there. Mm. I should not say a fixed point, it will say, yeah, and a fixed point there. Which really means that you have uh, <coughs> we should think of it as how do I say this this I won't say this implies see there is a implies we have a map I mean, I should say P acts on space. The Markov theorem implies that uh, this admits the Phi admits a section compatible with P. With P action on both sides. P acts here and here as well, and you have a section which is compatible with P action, that is the interpretation of the fixed point theorem. Okay. That means we have a map of, uh, you can reinterpret this as a map of, uh, uh, that we have a map F from G mod P into P which is gamma equivalent. This okay. okay standard thing you know it is a section of the associated bundle and so on. So instead of getting it to the grass money we got it to the space of probability measures on the projective space. And roughly speaking what it does is the following. You have a mapping from this space P into the 
You have a JLN equivariant map which does the following to each P, each, each machine mu here associated support into supports mu to yeah. So this really means subsets of the project refresh of Pn minus 1 C. Okay, to each mu associate support. That's obviously equivalent map. But suppose you're able to prove that this F. So you have first of all from G mod gamma, you have an equivalent map. So you got an equivalent map into this. If you are able to prove that the image of F, these measures here have support in some subspace, some project to subspace of PMS1. That means into the it's mapping into Grassmann in subspace of if you look at the vector space of subspace of projected space, you get a mapping into Grassmann. And that's exactly what Fussenberg proves. This proof I have not understood completely. I mean I, I have logically followed what he says, but I don't get uh, the sense of it, so to speak. Basically, this is what it does. So, is it G mod gamma or G mod P? Sorry, G mod P. And gamma equivalent. Gamma equivalent. And uh, this, there is a little bit of unitary representation theory involved in the proof. You look at L2, G mod gamma, and you have the unitary representation on that. All that test goes into the proof. Basically, the main uh, one, the, the real fact about from representation, it is not really serious representation theory. It says the following if you have a unitary representation hmm. of a group G, and if, uh, if you have a vector hmm. which is invariant under a non compact group, okay. then it is invariant under the whole group. Okay. Uh, uh, under the normal subgroup generated by that yeah, okay. group. Mm, I see. Okay. Uh, that is a more uh, proves this kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So, that is used in the process right. somewhere down the line. So, I will not uh, say more about it. The other approach is through the so called Oslerich's ergodic theorem. Mm -hmm. I said that result. Oh, I, sh I wrote Pn minus 1 C, I sh that is not quite, uh, I should say Pn minus 1 K. Everywhere, P n minus one k should be. Yeah. And in the, so you get a measurable map first into this uh, mess into all probability measures, and from that you go into the supports. You know, but supports is a family of subsets. Topologizing it is a bit of a nuisance, etc. But you have a topology, and you can make it uh, mapping is equivalent, continuous, measurable map. And then P, P is a compact space after all. And subsets of a compact space, there is a distance between uh, sets yes. which you can define into something of that kind. Mm. So you can. <coughs> it's, uh, actually, it is uh, in the Margulis paper, he it, it does not say, say anything like this. So what he does is to, it is more like you look at uh, finite subsets of various Grassmannians and then you take the union of all those gra various Grassmannians and finite, finite sets you also keep uh, changing the cardinality. And it is in the union of all that it gives an equivariant map. It is a little, uh, it, but the point is that uh, when you do that the whole thing can go into a single point. Yeah, when the support, you know, the case will support the whole projective space. The whole thing will collapse kind of, but you have to show that that kind of thing does not happen. Mm. And that is where this unitary representation theory plays a role. Okay. okay, the other way of looking at it is the following. You have G mod gamma. 
take an element s in g semi simple all eigenvalues greater than or equal to 0 and at least and one at least all eigenvalues sorry real greater than 0 and one at least no what it oh sorry all eigenvalues is real and one at least greater than 1 take such an element s then s acts on and this action is ergodic if gamma is a reduced. Now, we now have a representation rho of gamma j l n k you have the associated bundle if you like from a measure theoretic point of view you this is all bundles are trivial from purely measure theoretic bundle this can be identified with g bot gamma cross k n and on this we can make s operate on the first factor and use this isomorphism to carry over the mapping into this so get some action of s as a bundle of automorphism And then the theorem of Hausel Dutch tells you the following. You introduce some norm on K, okay. periodic norm or depending on whether it is a periodic field, whatever it is, you introduce some norm on that. Okay. And theorem due to Hausel Dutch. You have this action. Let us look at. Uh, let me get action of S. I will denote that by capital S. So, capital S is one lot of awesome here. <coughs> Look at S power n. So, it is a bundle lot of awesome. So, you can look at S power n of x v. and look at norm of this and take the logarithm of this and 1 over n of this. The assertion is this limit 1 over n log norm in V exists for almost all x and all V. And then you can look at the following situation. So, <coughs> and the limit exists for almost all x and v, and the limit lambda v is independent of x. This x, of course, is in G mod gamma. Once a limit exists that is independent of x follows from the ergodicity. You see that a priori it is a function of you get lambda v x a priori and it is easy to check that lambda v x if you becomes a function on g mod gamma which is s invariant. 
because you are taking s power n limit 1 over n, it's s invariant function on g mod gamma and therefore becomes uh, constant. So, that is and now it is true and moreover further this uh, yeah lambda v for each v there is a lambda v the set uh, for then further for any mu the set 1 over n limit let me call it lambda v x set um, of v such that lambda v x uh, x v such that lambda v x is less than mu less than or equal to mu is a pro is a pro uh, yeah no, not for any mu further there exists mu such that the set x v is a subspace of x cross k n of dimension L less than n independent of x L independent of x this means you are going to get a mapping to the grass banyan. See if it is uh, g l 1 look at this function log norm s power n x, x v <coughs> this is yeah See, if it is a one dimensional situation, suppose you look at GL1, so you can forget this V. Yeah. So, every V is a multiple of some yeah, fixed, exactly. so you can forget that V. So, you are just looking at log norm S and X. Okay. In other words, you are going to look at the function, you, you see, you have a certain section. When you make this identification, you have a certain section, and then that really means a function on G mod gamma. It is k now, you get a function on g mod gamma and what you are doing is to compose that function f with various powers f composed with t power n and then adding up and looking at 1 over n okay. mm, sure. that is the Birkhoff ergodic okay. theorem. So, this is a generalization of Birkhoff ergodic theorem in the non competitive situation. Okay. And uh, I have given a proof of this, yeah. it appears in the Israel journal, it is not a difficult proof, mm -hmm. but somewhat lengthy to go into it mm -hmm. and in any case, uh, you know, I, I I won't be able to recall it very well, <laughs> so I, I have not looked through it okay. recently. So, this gives you a mapping into the Grassmannian for some Grassmannian. Mm -hmm. The only tr trouble is this, yeah, you need some fact here, that is when I what is happened is this, this uh, let me put it like this. If I take a, an element S n, let us just look at S x v. This x has been moved by S somewhere. So, this is going to be S x comma v, you know the point is you are passing to the quotient by gamma and you are taking a section. So, what you will get here is some phi phi x v 
where this phi x will be in gamma. So, phi phi will have the following property phi of uh, x um, yeah if I look at uh, sorry that is you know the S x v is written like this and if you apply S again you are going to get S on this it will give you S square x and here you will get uh, phi S x v and things of kind that is a one cocycle condition you will get on. phi is a one cocycle. So, it is formulated in terms of one cocycles sometimes instead of see the point is that the, when you trivialize this what you will get a measurable the action becomes simply getting a measurable one cocycle. How if you look at the action of uh, anything on a trivial bundle in a bundle homomorphism you write down the condition you will get a one cocycle condition and that is what it is. Uh, okay. So, that one this one cocycle is a function on g mod gamma I mean I am one cocycle on the cyclic group generated by s group generated by s so you get a one cocycle on that with values in gamma that is what you will get and then you will apply rho. So, when you look at that rho gamma what you that one cocycle you would like it to be in L 1 only then the theorem holds ok, I have, okay this this uh, one cocycle should be in L 1. So, if S x we could we need this you need an extra hypothesis namely this phi is in L 1 phi that function phi x should be in L 1 and that is ok here because if the quotient is compact it poses no difficulty you find that only fi finitely many values will be taken for each x you take a fundamental domain each x you move it by s the whole thing the fundamental domain is compact s sub that is also compact and you want to what uh, for x you to take sx and bring it back by a suitable gamma the only finitely many. In the case when this non compact it is a little more complicated, but this I have not completely fixed, but it looks like if I go back to the Kazan theorem you know the things which go off to infinity they all can be translated into something which pushes one element to conjugation by conjugation to one to identity. I have that, that kind of thing mm -hmm. no use that and looks like you can manage to get a L1. L, see L, L infinity in fact L infinity L1. is an L1 mm. because we are a finite measure space anyway mm. ok. So, that is the proof of this theorem two different ways of looking at it neither way have I give you given you complete details in one way I have not even fixed up the details in the other case it is available in this is not so relevant. So, ok. Weird kind of proof, we will see. <coughs> so, you have this map F yes, from G mod P to some Grassmannian G and L. You have a measurable gamma equivariant map. Take an element S in G, which is semi simple, such that the centralizer of S <coughs> is more than the maximal torus that is, is the form T times S or let me write H T torus H semi simple generated by unipotent groups. 
group groups u alpha okay. right. okay. see you can there is always a, because the rank is at least two there is a singular torus yeah. so t is a singular torus ok then he says this f from f I will manufacture a map into <coughs> T is a singular torus and this is of course not a direct product but anyway it is a it's almost direct product kind of thing. <coughs> then he says look at f let me write uh, given f and given this s I will write f s so mapping from g mod p into measurable uh, g n l valued measurable functions on the centralizer of S. Namely, the very naive way of saying it, F S you want any element in in here G sorry F S you want F S G this has to be a function with GNL values functions on ZS. So, you put in uh, T here in ZS and define this as very naively F of TG. That is so for each T you, you get a value in the Grassmannian. So, it is a function on function of t for each g you get a function f s g is a function of t ok. Now on the space of functions on g and functions yes, let me call this measurable functions I will call this m z s Grassmannian n l all measurable functions. Uh, what they call the in a um, measure the layer topology measure convergence and put it on the topology ok. Convergence and measure in measure convergence and measure, huh? measure I do not remember the exact mm -hmm. anyway and of course uh, Modulo equivalence almost everywhere equivalence. Okay, almost everywhere uh, ZS is a group which has a hard measure almost everywhere with respect to that. Put on this, so I will call this itself already. I am assuming two things are equivalent if they are equal almost everywhere. That is the space. So, almost everywhere. It's a space. On this space, GL operates. Functions only on the second factor. So, pass to the quotient by this. Uh, not only really GL, but also T. T operates by here. You just to by the torus. Only I'm only taking the torus. So this goes gets into mu. Zs modulo this singular torus comma g. This is first the torus part, and then the, you can also gl and k you can operate. You get some space which I'll call m not all the way. Now, if you look at this function f s. Um, right. So, F s gives you mapping F s bar if you like from G mod P into the space M naught. Okay. 
this space is it's not the house dog but it is t not okay <laughs> that's important and what happens is this if you look at this map fs bar g mod p2 not it is if you, it's compared with the action of uh, here take the left action by the torus t but that left action by the torus t means you are going to put the t here but you are passed to the quotient by that so it becomes constant map because this action of s is ergodic and the space is t not any space with t not functions into that which are invariant under s have to be constants because point points and uh, if you given two points t not means you given two points there's uh, one oh, one of them is contained in open set which excludes the other so from that it's easy to see that this is so this fs bar is constant but that means what that means fs bar g let's look at m g where m is an element of uh, <coughs> z t i know this fs bar mg yeah no first first let me see what we know is fs bar tg equals fs bar g for t t this we know and therefore we know it's it's a constant so fs fs bar g is constant which means all the elements of uh, this implies fs bar fs of g mg is in a single t cross j ln k orbit because the space is space of orbits in single thing. that means in turn if m is t times u where u is in uh, <coughs> h. h you find that f s m sorry t u g must be equal to f s tg notice that u and t commute okay and then some lambda of okay now lambda where lambda u some measurable map now lambda from is a mapping from <coughs> or group h and one checks easily that lambda u lambda is homomorphism and any measurable homomorphism of a locally compact group into another locally compact group is continuous okay <coughs> okay and therefore uh, certainly on therefore any unipotent subgroup of h it's going to be a it's a continuous map of h and any unipotent group is contained in the commutator subgroup and it therefore actually becomes a morphism when you go to the unipotent group any of the root groups it's a morphism so you find that if you u belongs to the root group you find that fs of uh, ug is lambda u fsg so it's already rational in that variable u and you can vary the u to spread over all the root spaces left and right and therefore you get uh, and then actually you can find a, a number of uh, u such that the product map is 
you know uh, almost yes. bijection not quite but anyway can do that. and therefore it becomes uh, on a Zariski open set the thing becomes a morphism and therefore a morphism everywhere what are proof <laughs> looks a little crazy hmm? Amazing. <laughs> 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 you want to show something is a problem, but you go to all these. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you know, weird spaces of functions that touch it. So, that completes the. Proof of super agility and arithmeticity. Uh, I, see, this guy proves absolute economy. No improve upon him. Try to do it. Some theorems of Borel, Mostro, or other have managed to give slightly better proofs, improvement, and something. But even she is so economical. And the use is always very. T naught T one line, can I be a problem? Not being like that. Yeah, that's it. Amazing. Yeah. 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 Now, of course, it must be said that uh, ergodic theory, measure theory, all those weird topologies, all you have to consider. So, from that point of view, in fact, the, uh, the field topology itself is rather weird. Yeah. So, there are such many weird. Right. Things in right. No. <clears throat> hmm. fix this, you know, this Oswald's theorem, I need that uh, cocycle to be L1. Hmm. Cocycle is a, on a cyclic group, cocycle is determined by just what happens in one element. Okay. So, the one the, it should be possible to <coughs> write, down. write down the proof for the, our, one has used the fact that things going to infinity, mm -hmm. they not only uh, push some element to identity by inner conjugation, g n goes to infinity mod gamma, g n x, g n gamma n, g n inverse numbers, but the gamma n's are all conjugate to finite number. Mm. So, fundamental domain construct nature, you can assume that Anything in the fundamental domain actually pushes to zero, gets closer and closer. I mean, conjugate something close close to zero. Conjugate something out of a finite set. Other than that, it should be possible to say that there's a fundamental domain which has only finitely many neighbors. Mm -hmm. 